Immediately, the sergeant called out for the two men to identify themselves, but instead of receiving a verbal response, bullets and RPGs began to hit the patrol base, as a significantly larger Taliban force appeared from out of the darkness. Alright y'all, welcome back to Common Arms Channel. So today's video we're checking out something from Liveth Forevermore, and of course you guys already know I love this YouTube channel, because he produces a lot of awesome military content, you know, historical stuff, battles, and famous individuals. So the individual we we're talking about today is Sergeant Diprasad Poon, who was a British Gurkha, and he served in Afghanistan. So a lot of y'all might be familiar with what he did, not necessarily his name, but he's often referred to as the, the one-man Gurkha army. So yeah, I've heard a little bit about this specific incident on Facebook and a few other websites and I've read a few articles on this but I haven't really gotten so much detail and of course Liveth Forevermore does some awesome content so I feel like this would be uh, the perfect place to learn a little bit more about this individual so this, this video is about five minutes long so I mean it's not too long but again any sort of information will definitely help me out especially the background information so again this incident happened in September 2010, and this happened in, I believe it was Helmand Province. Yeah, so Helmand Province in Afghanistan. So, all right, let's check it out. Sergeant Diprasad Poon. I hope I'm saying that correctly, but yeah. <laughs> the hype intro. <laughs> On the 17th of September 2010, a platoon from the 1st Battalion, the Royal Gurkha Rifles, was stationed at two patrol bases near the village of Rahim Calais in the north of Helmand Province. Mm. At some point during the day, the bulk of the platoon departed the bases to secure a key road to the east, with two small detachments remaining behind to garrison the outposts. Okay. Tasked with holding the southernmost patrol base were four Gurkhas, among them Sergeant Dibrasad Poon who, in the evening of the 17th, was on sentry duty on the roof of a two-story compound that was at the center of the base. Okay, so I guess uh, the story is about the element that remained behind. So we're talking about a patrol base. It says there were four Gurkhas that were responsible for holding this patrol base. Um, so that's not really that much. Even if it is like a, a two-story compound, four people is really not that much for like a, you know, a little garrison. So I'm not sure if they had any support elements or if there's anyone else involved, but yeah, just already that's not it's not a whole lot to fight off with. So four personnel and one patrol base. Okay, let's see how this goes. Man in his post for several hours, Sergeant Pun soon began to hear some noises materializing from the other side of the main gate, and uh -oh. as he later recalled. I thought at first maybe it was a cow, but my suspicion soon built up, and I saw two Taliban digging to lay down an IED in front of our gate. Jeez. Immediately, even... the sergeant called out for the two men to identify themselves, but instead of receiving a verbal response, bullets and RPGs began to hit the patrol base. Dang, right away. A significantly away. larger Taliban force appeared from out of the darkness. Realising the outpost was under attack, Sergeant Pun grabbed a nearby radio and informed his platoon commander of the unfolding situation, before okay. turning his attention onto the enemy. Okay, good move, for sure. As soon as I knew they were Taliban, I thought I was going to die. But as soon as I started firing, that feeling went away. <laughs> I knew I had to do something before they killed me and my three comrades. I thought, before they kill me, I have to kill some of them. Hell yeah. That's very. That's a very Gurkha mindset, I feel like. I mean, in general, it's good to have a mindset like that. But yeah, of course, the Gurkhas aren't going to be going down without a fight. Because, uh, yeah, I've seen their training and they're definitely hardcore individuals. Because if I needed anyone on my left or right to help me defend this, even if it was just three other peoples, you definitely can't go wrong with the Gurkhas. And you guys already know, especially if you're in the British Army or the Royal Marines, you guys probably know how serious the Gurkhas are when it comes to stuff like this. Picking up his SAAT, the Gurkha fired off a rifle grenade at the attacking enemy, prior to detaching a nearby general purpose machine gun from its tripod and returning <laughs> fire on the advancing Taliban fighters, Hell yeah. and moving forward from three directions. Hey, he's not messing about. Within minutes, however, he had spent all his machine gun ammunition, and so resorted to using a mix of grenades to disrupt the attack, 
mm. including six phosphorus, six fragmentation, and four rifle grenades. Wow. Once these two had become expended, he picked up his SAAT again and, moving from position to position, he continued to engage the enemy, some of whom managed to break through his line of sight and reach the compound. Okay, that's scary. Looking for a way to get onto the roof, some of the insurgents began scaling up the building's mud walls, with one fighter reaching the top first and proceeding to rush the Gurkha. Oh. Training his SAAT onto the enemy fighter, Sergeant Pun shot and killed the insurgent. Seconds before experiencing a weapon malfunction, just as another Taliban fighter appeared on the roof. Oof, sheesh. Ditching his rifle, the sergeant grabbed the nearby GPMG tripod and held it at the second insurgent, knocking him unconscious. Wow, okay. Okay, so it definitely changed how drastic the situation is when you have people scaling the compound and actually getting onto the roof that you're that you're on. Because it's one thing to have like defenses, you know, you have people rushing, but if you have like a fence or some obstacles set up, it's a little bit l less stress, but when you have people actually scale in the compound and it's turning into more of hand-to-hand -hand combat, yeah, that's a completely different thing. It's completely different psychologically, especially. So, I mean, he had a malfunction with his weapon, but he was able to pick up a tripod and use that as a weapon. Hey, whenever you're in situations like this, you, you definitely gotta find whatever you can to, to use as a weapon. And <laughs> a tripod, yeah, that, that'll definitely do the job for sure. Sheesh. Moments after, Sergeant Pun heard several more of the enemy attempting to climb up to the roof, who he pushed back by dropping a sandbag onto one and forcing the others to retreat when a claymore mine detonated. Nice. Eventually, after 17 minutes of heavy fighting, the enemy attack had collapsed and what was left of the Taliban force withdrew back in the direction they had come from. Awesome. A short while later, British reinforcements arrived at the patrol base to strengthen its defences where they found an exhausted Sergeant Diprasad Pun still on the roof. Hmm. Sergeant Pun later stated, I thought there might have been around 20 to 30 Taliban fighters involved in the attack, but later locals told me it was probably around 15. I know I'm very lucky to be alive. I didn't think the attack would ever end, and I nearly collapsed when it was over. I did what I was trained to do. There wasn't any choice but to fight. <laughs> that is an awesome mindset right there. Of course, you can guarantee you that had a, a lot to do with his success. Yeah, I mean, dropping a sandbag on a dude, that's uh, not something you would generally hear about someone doing in Afghanistan, but <laughs> sheesh. Again, you got to find what you can. Hell yeah. Good stuff. I think it's pretty well deserved. Is that really the motto? Better to die than to be a coward. I love that motto. <laughs> dude, what a legend. Okay. That is an awesome motto, dude. I could I could live by a motto like that. <laughs> I mean with a motto like that you can understand the mindset that, that Gurkhas have especially. But yeah, I mean, okay, fifteen fighters. Okay, if someone was looking at this from like a movie perspective, they wouldn't be too concerned. But when you have four people going against 15 and they're basically rushing your compound and they're scaling the roof, yeah, it, it's gonna be pretty scary and it's going to do something to you psychologically. But you can see he, he knew what he had to do. He was trained to do it and he absolutely knocked it out of the park. And I'm sure that Taliban thought twice before attacking this place again, or even attacking their Gurkhas again. Because if you see your buddy getting hit by a tripod, or you know your other buddy getting a sandbag dropped onto him it's going to scare you off for sure so yeah very awesome to hear these stories and again liveth forevermore does an awesome job with summarizing everything i really love the quotes the quotes are awesome because it really allows you to get into the person's mindset as to how he felt and what he was actually thinking at the time he or she of course so it's awesome to get those quotes from the source and sort of see their perspective on everything and yeah, he seemed, he seemed like he had a very awesome mindset and he was totally prepared to do what he had to do on that day. So awesome to hear about. It's, it's cool to see this stuff on Facebook, but to actually learn a little bit more in depth and know how legit the people actually were, the people involved actually were, it's awesome to hear about. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Very awesome recommendation. This is a pretty new video, it came out September 23rd, so relatively new. So I do appreciate the recommendation. And again, I am subscribed to Liveth Forevermore, but sometimes I don't get the notifications 
as often as I would like. So I do appreciate you guys notifying me whenever these videos do come out because they're very awesome, very cool to check out. But yeah, let me know what you guys think about this badass down in the comment section. And de definitely let me know if you have any other information about this incident or about Sergeant Poon because yeah, it's just, it's awesome. It's awesome to hear about. It's awesome to see that these individuals exist, especially being, you know, on, on our side, being on the side of the US. Very cool to hear about having badass allies like that. And of course, guys, feel free to recommend anything down in the comments section, as long as it's generally focused around the military, because my channel is Combat Arms Channel. So if it's focused around the military, I love seeing those recommendations because it sort of allows me to shotgun blast all these awesome stories and individuals out to the community. And uh, yeah, it's awesome to see what you guys think about these people and these stories. But yeah, definitely feel free to keep those recommendations coming. I do appreciate you guys supporting the channel and sending those recommendations and sending your thoughts and your comments. It's awesome to read. It's awesome to see. So I do appreciate that support. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. That is it for this one. So we'll see you all in the next one.